Primetime. Just north of the Delaware Expressway and east of Broad Street, we find ourselves at Lincoln Financial Field in South Philly. Tonight, we're on to week two of the NFL season. We got a good one on tap, as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the defending NFC champs, the Philadelphia Eagles. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Eagles team as they interplay here. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1-0. And they looked awfully good last week and came away with a two-touchdown victory. They did have a few reasons for concern defensively, but all in all, they'll take a repeat here if they could get it. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, they too... Two teams here fresh off week one victories. Who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports? And we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff. This will be a touchback. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And they will be led out by their rookie quarterback. And he was certainly solid, maybe a little bit more last week in his NFL debut through a couple of touchdown passes and earned his first victory. Now we all know it's not gonna be easy from here, but at least now, he's seeing what it takes to win at this level. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And his first look is incomplete. You look at this Eagle defense. They were strong last week, CD, and that went over New England. Yeah, they gave up 17 points, but that's about what you consider the break-even mark. If you give up 17 points a game all year long, you're thinking you're going to be a playoff team. That's what you're looking for. Room to improve, of course. A pretty nice effort. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. They'll drop the throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big gain of 28 as the drive continues. And early on, they're picking up right where they left off last week. And I know a lot of coaches say each game is its own. You don't really have carryover. This feels like carryover. So much confidence from the previous game that they're using to their advantage now. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. This running game is so important for them, and they know that. It helped lead them to a victory last week when he was over 100 yards. Let's face it, it's their identity, and that's what they want to play to. They Touchdown, Vikings! Justin Jefferson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Vikings put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. With these Thursday night games, sometimes you get those quick turnarounds. You wonder how a team is going to start. They started really well. Everyone's always wondering, going into a Thursday night game, who has their legs, who has a, you know the overall health of a team. But mentally, if you get that early edge, the other team might think to itself, ah, oh, it's been a short week. We're not really ready to go. You might run them into the ground that way. That's why getting that early score means a lot. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. Now a hit and a loose football. And I believe he was able to get this back. He was. Boy, after giving up the touchdown, lucky that didn't turn into another. I didn't do this in college, but I did it in high school. When you return kicks <laughs> and you lose it yourself, the panic that goes through you and the determination to get the ball back I don't even know how to describe it. And I think we just saw an example there. Yeah, and the relief when you get it back <laughs> like he did. Yeah, you go to the sidelines, you know you're going to get yelled at, but you can handle it because you got the ball back. They go with a former Lion. It's DeAndre Swift. And yeah, he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. 
The numbers for him from a week ago. 17 carries, 76 yards. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. Out of the gun, Purdy. Quick slant to Brown. And A.J. going to pick up an Eagles first down as he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. A throwing here, Purdy. That one complete down the field to Smith. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A really nice gain of 25 yards. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 41. Another nice gain, 16 yards there and a first down again. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Purdy to throw it on first down. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Well, that's a pretty darn good start to his season, huh? A sack in the opener, adds a second one here. That tells you about his offseason. He came in determined to have a big year, and it's paying off. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second in a country mile. Purdy. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. That'll give him eight that time. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Now Purdy. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Multiple defenders getting home there for a loss of 11. So now make that a second sack for them on this drive. And Brandon, we hear it every week when we go out to do a game. Everyone talks about playing complimentary football. Their offense goes down and scores. They see that, and they want to back them up, and that they did, getting two sacks on this first drive. A 59-yard attempt. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this will stay at a seven-point game. And this is a commentary on today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on them, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. The Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. Now they were winners in the season opener Sunday. Now they get the quick turnaround game here on Thursday night. But, CD, you say this is an ideal setup for them, right? Well, just the way the schedule lines up because everyone's got to play a Thursday game, and that's because of competitive balance. So, let's face it, would you rather play week two when you're still relatively fresh and excited about the season? Or week 15 when you've had a season's worth of bumps and bruises to factor in, and who knows what your record might be at that time as well. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. A gain of nine brings up second and one at the 32-yard line. The play-action fake. They'll look to throw. Throw left side, complete to Moss. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Jefferson moving in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. Touchdown! A great effort there. 
His first touchdown of the new season. And the Vikings lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. They scored the most points of anyone on opening weekend, and now first quarter touchdown here. And while there's no guarantee that all the points they scored in opening weekend are going to hold up and be the average all year long, they're certainly starting to set that type of a pace. And what you do with that is you put in the heads of all of your opponents. We've got to really be ready on defense because these guys got to put the ball in the end zone. You think they can keep piling on the points like this? I think they can if they're prepared to adjust and adapt because they won't see the same defense as week in and week out. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They come off a victory over the weekend, but now the quick turnaround here for this Thursday night game. How does that affect how teams like this approach these short turnarounds? Well, wins and losses always factor into, you know, how you're getting ready for the next game. But equally as important when you have the short turnaround, what is your injury situation? Are you losing key guys? And if so, how well have the backups prepared for this? Because you don't have much time to get them ready. They have to be ready before this week in order to play well in this game. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Purdy now to throw off the play action. A throw out wide going to be incomplete. That looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game. I think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win. Sometimes you over game plan, overthink things, get back to what works. Call it an even 40-yard punt, seven though on the return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. It has been about as perfect of a start to this game as these guys could have asked for, Charles. They've scored on their first two drives. They still haven't given anything up on the other side of the ball, so they can already make this a three-score game here if they can come away with points on this drive. And they're almost pushing to the brink, aren't they, partner? Almost to the point now where it's a loss of words for me, which I know would excite all of our viewers, but you're just now supposed to see that type of dominance so quickly in a game like this. Everything they've done has been working so far. Offense, defense, you name it, it's going well for them. Third down, he'll drop the throw. The throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. And he couldn't get it to check up. That kicks all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. They find themselves in a good size hole here, in a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. say it's incomplete. You look at this defense for the Vikings. They were terrific a week ago in that victory over Tampa Bay, Charles. One thing you always look for when you're evaluating a defense, how opportunistic are they? How many takeaways do they get about last week's game? The number was six. Phenomenal performance. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. On third down, it's Purdy. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. On first and 10, it's Swift. And good running there as he'll take this all the way up to midfield. 
11 more on that one and another first down. Well, you're down early. How do you get back in the game? Maybe establish the run. I think they're trying to do that. I'm with you on that one. And what I like about the message is that there's no panic from the head coach. He's already told his offense coordinator, let's run the football. Let's get things settled down a little bit and find our way back into this game. So from just across the midfield stripe, here's second and nine. Once again, it's Swift. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. Here's play number seven on the drive. This is third and seven. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. Purdy off the play fake. Wide open is Watkins. He's got him. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. A good pick up there at 22. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Here's Swift. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right... And he's in! Touchdown! Swift, his first rushing touchdown on the year. And the Eagles are back within a score. Well, he'd been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. Elliott Good with a PAT, and that'll make our score 14-7. Taking it about the one. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Now throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. He'll look to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Moss. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. From the 46, here's second and two. Now back to throw. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Back to throw again. That is caught. And he will have a Vikings first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you, and you know what else you're looking for? It's a, who are the freshest guys coming off the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter. And they'll come up second and seven as they've got it as we resume action. They'll look to throw again. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. So five yards here, five on the play. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. 
A nice throw right there. And Charles, this is game number two in the NFL for this young rookie. His guy's getting the victory last week, and he played pretty well by most accounts. Curious, what did you see? I saw something similar to what you described, Brandon, because I saw a guy who looked the part, a guy who was in command, not just with the touchdown passes, but definitely looked to be in control of the offense as well. And you have both now. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. The competition comes up in so many different ways. And right now, this unit, their competition is who's going to get to the quarterback the most times. Have about five sacks last week. We just saw their first one of this game. Now this one from about two counties over after the sack. They come up on a second and very long. This is caught inside the 15. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. That one good for 37 yards. Well, he looked his way quite a bit in this first half, and with good reason. You can see it there. He is such a handful defensively, just too hard to keep him under wraps. He delivers a big play here for this offense. Working with the lead, trying to get to 2-0. Here's first and 10. Back to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. Second down and three. Now a handoff as they run left side. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. Keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. This defense not budging. Back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. The offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They're going to look to throw. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had the play call on fourth and goal, but it's dropped in the end zone. And this Eagle defense stands tall down near the goal line. So a tough pill to swallow there. A would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it, should they not? Is it the right play call, is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. And he's going to lose yardage back to his own one-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Again, it's Penny. And they'll hit him for a loss as he's back to his two-yard line. Well, now hang on here because he appears to be shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And he's able to get it out of there. 46 yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And it will be Vikings ball, first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind him, trying to put together another drive. And a simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you guys, last time. Touchdown, Vikings! A great play there. 54 yards, and the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. 
Well, Charles, kind of the future of this franchise on display right there. You had a rookie throwing it, a rookie catching it, and taking it into the end zone. Could you imagine if we were in the owner's box right now and we could look at the front office and see the grins on their faces to see the present making plays and knowing what the future will bring with these youngsters going out and making big-time moments happen for this team. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. Here's second and 10. Purdy from the gun. And that one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. He had space in front of him if he had held on, but instead it's third down. Here's Purdy now on third and goal. And that is incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. Fielded just inside the 30. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. So here are the Vikings to take over. They were winners a week ago over the Bucks. They lead here as well as they come up on first down. On play action, they'll throw. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He'll drop to throw. And this one is incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. From just shy of midfield, here's second down and eight. Back to throw here. There goes a deep ball in zone. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. A big play there with two touchdowns on the season, both in this game. And the Vikings take a three touchdown lead. He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You can see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns in 21. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And he returns this to the 22. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. Purdy. 
And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. So that now four first-half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And, partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Back to throw, Purdy. Going deep here for Watkins. And this throw will be intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And he'll take this across midfield and inside the 45. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on-the-job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That was nice work there defensively to force incompletion. Now, even though this drive started in plus territory, they're still not in field goal range yet. So they can work towards another couple of stops and not allowing that turnover to hurt. And he's able to carve out about six there, down to the 37. Here is third down at four. And it's third down. They'll set up to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. Yeah, they were right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Jordan Davis, just a monster on that play, stopping it from going anywhere. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. Now a dump off here complete. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. Looking to throw. And he fires one, but incomplete. And based on my math, They've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And this one is right through. So after four touchdowns in the game for this offense, this time they're forced into taking the three. But you did mention four touchdowns, right? So four out of five, not too bad. I think that's a pretty good record for them. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive in particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal is not changing a bit. They want another pick. Oh, everything falling apart now. Another one intercepted. And the return will stop right around the 25. A few things better than a big man interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight? Well, not for the quarterback who just threw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but to throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is, 
you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game telling all their teammates maybe I should shift over to offense I've got skills what do you think <laughs> oh absolutely I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it unfortunately here he couldn't make it into the end zone they'll wind up getting seven on the play and it'll be second down brings up second and three at the 18 yard line They'll look to throw here. But going back to the same well, it's Hawkinson again. And Hawkinson going to have the Vikings first down as he's down to the 11. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Now the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Back to throw now on first down. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. A great effort there with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Vikings are able to add on to their first half lead. So this offensive unit, yeah, they were solid in the opening week victory, and now they are looking just as sharp here in week two. And that's exactly what you want, too, because you want to get better each and every week and really ramp up as the season goes on. I know it's still early in the season and a lot can happen, but this offense, they look like they're going to be fun to watch each and every time out. Taken at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. DeAndre Swift and the Eagles back out there. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield and get the ball in his hands in open space. And just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with a run so far. He's going to look deep for Watkins. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Boy, so another interception, CD. And it feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and nine. He'll look to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Reed Blankenship. And the Eagles are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. That's not one that he's going to want to remember, but he had to get it out of the way at some point, his first career interception. And if he's the guy that they think he is, he's not laughing it off, but he's also not going to let it affect him as the game proceeds. He's going to go back out there, still be the same confident kid, the reason that they drafted him, and go out and play. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And this will be caught by Brown. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Purdy from the gun on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down by about a yard. It's a gain of five on third and four. Purdy will look to throw again here. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, 
Catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. well. This defense is certainly organized and playing off of each other because the rush is providing pressure and the coverage is forcing incompletions and capitalizing on mistakes. When you get every level on defense hitting at once, you get first half scores just like this one. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion. And that is no good. And they will remain well, well behind. Well, Brandon, anything beyond 50, you start rolling the dice a bit. And once you get up around 57, 58 yards, the chances of making it go down dramatically. And sure enough, this one winds up no good. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. They have been red hot, sometimes white hot here in this first half. They're just looking to add to that total right now. And this has to serve as a reminder to myself because so many times I get wrapped up in the play calling, how they've sequenced things, how it's run. But you know, at the end of the day, it's still execution. Those guys out on the field, and right now they are locked in and really looking good. They'll try to continue to be locked in here as we get ready to approach halftime. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. It's Moss. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Now second and three. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Back to throw again. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. On fourth down, they'll try and run for it. And he won't get there. They stop him a few yards short of the line to gain. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Eagles defense able to hold. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. <laughs> Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Complete. Smith has it. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. Throwing on second down, it's Purdy. Got a man, it's Brown. The Eagles will take their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Final 12 seconds of the half now as they've got it first and 10. Here's a fake on the jet sweep and instead a give up the middle. And defensively they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a route. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we'll get back to you guys in a moment. But first, the NFL season is in full swing. Let's show the good folks what we've got in store for us later this weekend here in week two. Good games galore in that Sunday lineup. We'll highlight the one going on in Atlanta. A big one for the Falcons as they'll take on the always tough Green Bay Packers. In the late afternoon games, the place to be might very well be Denver, Colorado, where it'll be the Broncos taking on the Washington Commanders. And finally, on Monday night, 
our first doubleheader of the year. Saints Panthers at 7.15 Eastern, followed by Cleveland Pittsburgh an hour later. Coach, thanks very much. Fine work as always as we welcome you back for quarter number three. It's the Eagles ready to see the football first, and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. A Brock Purdy in the offense back out there. And he's looking to take much better care of the football here in half two after three first half interceptions. We don't have to just look strictly at the numbers here. You know what else happens to a team when you turn it over three times like that? It erodes confidence in you. And it erodes confidence in the offense. And now you have the defensive guys looking over and saying, what is going on here? And instead of playing for the team, they're playing angry and mad at their teammates. And they run the option here on first and 10. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, we saw a lot of negative plays that resulted in plenty of lost yardage in the first half. And that trend is continuing here. Purdy now to throw. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. Uh, you got a young quarterback, you know, maybe that's just an example of a growing pain for him. I think you're right about that because when the game starts to move fast and it moves quickly on him, a lot of times they fall back. In trouble and he's taken down. The safety Antoine Winfield got in there that time. Well, for last week's performance, which was so good, he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Week. He got a lot of praise, and understandably so, from national media. Looking pretty good on that play, too. And I love what he told us this week before the game. He talked about how much time they spend working on pass rush moves every position because anyone can go after the quarterback in their defense, and you can see how they've all absorbed their lessons. Now on is the punter Charlton now as he's able to get this one away. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big gain, or do they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? So he stopped for no gain, and it's third and four now. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. On first down, they'll go to the ground attack. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. Oh, now an injured player down there, and this is not what you want to see. That's Justin Jefferson, who's having some issues. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. He'll find Osborne here. It'll go as a gain of four, and that's going to bring up second down. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six. He'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. It's a first down, and he's also over 190 receiving yards now. What a game. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild, and here's another completion for good yardage. 
Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Third and goal as they look to pour some more salt in the wound. Back to throw here. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked up by James Bradbury. And the Eagles are going to get the football here as the ball will come out to the 20. Well, to be blunt, not a whole lot has gone right for this defense in this ball game. But that's something right there still in the third quarter. It would, it would take something around miracle territory for a comeback, but maybe that's a start, Charles. It certainly is, and they're definitely showing that there's some fight still left in them. Hasn't been a banner day, but they're trying their best to put that disappointment behind them and find ways to make plays. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. The stop for no gain brings up second and 10 from the 20. At the 20-yard line. Back to throw, Purdy. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try and run here with Swift. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 98 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. Looking right side, and that's complete to Watkins. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a yard. Swift going to try up the middle. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. That's good for the Eagles. First down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. His throw incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he was fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. And he missed it. It's no good. And they will remain well, well behind. Well, when you've got a kicker out there who's already missed twice, he definitely would rather have about a 30-yarder rather than one from a neighboring county. Can we agree to just give him a pass on that one? It would have definitely been a way to turn his mood around, but instead, it's a third miss and another scoreless possession. Two sides to every coin. This is the bad side of missing the 58-yarder. Now they start at the 48. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, and that is incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. A gain there of 21 yards. So first and 10 now from the 30. In motion right is Osborne. Now a fake on the jet sweep and off the play action. He'll look to throw it. 
Throw right side, going to be complete to Moss. Touchdown, Vikings! A great play there. 30 yards. And the Vikings have got it on cruise control. So I tell you what, Charles, I know that you don't put a ton of stock into power rankings and things of that nature, but another score here, and two weeks into the season, this is maybe the most impressive team in the NFL. Would you agree? Well, they've certainly sold me as they've sold you, and I agree with you, no question about it. They won easily last week. They're on their way to another lopsided victory here. They're definitely a team to be reckoned with, and they are serving notice to the rest of the league. And not willing to risk another fumble. He'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Well, we're still in the third quarter, so there's some time to kind of clean this up and make it look more respectable. Now, a win, that's probably gone out the window, Charles. But I, I don't know. Do you look at this as a time to just improve and maybe start to look towards the future? I think you have to find something to play for, something to grasp onto until the clock runs out. But Brandon, we've been around this game a long time. This is an outlier. You don't get many blowouts like this no matter how the game looks on paper going in. This one has turned out to be everyone's worst nightmare realized. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Work to do here to avoid falling to one and one, but this is first and 10 right now. Purdy looking to throw. This will be caught by Brown. And now they'll stop play here, at least momentarily. A member of the Vikings in some discomfort after that last play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. They'll run the jet sweep with Brown. And A.J. going to pick up an Eagles first down as the tackle made up at the 48-yard line. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. First down. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Now Purdy. And his throw is going to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Back to the air on second down, Purdy. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, that old, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. The Eagles send out their punter now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Now the Vikings now heading on to the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Second and 11. And a quick throw here. That's complete. That'll go for a gain of seven. And it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. They'll set up a throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And if anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield, and there's another completion. So from the 36 now, first and 10. 
back to throw. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. Well, thanks for joining us here on a Thursday night in the NFL. Third quarter, second and ten coming up. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Throw left side, complete to Moss. Now following the completion, we're going to get a stoppage here for an injury. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. The Eagles call on the extra defensive back here as they prepare for a stop on third down. A play-action fake. They'll look to throw. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. Well, this has been a tough one for them, Charles. They've struggled really on both sides of the football. And one thing that's really plagued them, the turnovers. They've had issues keeping the football in their possession. And every game that's ever been played, <laughs> all coaches talk about taking care of the football and limiting turnovers. And in this one, after we saw that first turnover, we worried that things would snowball. And it certainly did, especially on the scoreboard. Right back to Swift again on second down. And he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. And you can tell just by looking at it that this offense is a frustrated unit. Things are really unraveling here, and as a head coach, Time to earn your paycheck. You've got to find a way to keep it together as that brings up another fourth down. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead. If they can get points on this drive, first and 10 upcoming. They'll start on the ground here on first down to about the 40-yard line. Well, in every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Two yards on the pickup there. And now we've got a third and four. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Out of the gun now on third down. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Well, the other day they told us we've got third and five or less. We have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. The Eagles just about set to go to work on offense. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Here's Purdy. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. 
throwing here. Purdy. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have an Eagles first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. Purdy. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Again, it's Purdy to throw it. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. On third down, here's Purdy. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break. And you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. The Eagles unable to convert there on fourth. And the Vikings, they have the football now in excellent field position. Well, they've clearly made a conscious decision here to be more aggressive in the late stages of this game here in the second half. And I get it. In this situation, you know, if you want to be aggressive out near midfield, you feel good about your defense maybe, or just, hey, I thought I had a proper play call, but how about the guys that just stopped them? How good do they feel right now? Hey, you want to go for it here? We shut you down. They're over on the bench right now feeling great. Here now, second and four. And four. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Now this offense really looking polished these first couple of weeks. Here's first and 10. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 80 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's going on. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. <laughs> well, Parker, nothing but praise from me for this offense. They have been tremendous all night long. They knew what they had to do to unlock the defense. And let's face it, this has been a master class in offensive football that we've been here to witness. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. That's good power football on first and goal. A lot of teams will throw from there. But that's a nice job to chew up a few more yards and get yourself closer to the goal line. Second and five. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. A five-yard touchdown. And the Vikings are on their way to a 2-0 start. Another touchdown through the air for them and for this rookie quarterback at the helm. He has put them in a great position, Charles, to get the victory in this one. He's absolutely taken charge. Every touchdown for them has come via his arm. Zero rushing touchdowns, no special teams, no defensive scores. All him throwing the football, he's in cruise control right now, and so is his team. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. And out now come the Eagles. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. 
It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Five yards. Now it's third and five. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. This has obviously been a bad loss, but one of the few things they can still do is try to throw the ball all the way to the end zone and get some points on the board so they're not shut out over the final two quarters of this game. Fair catch called for right around the 11-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And a short three-yard pickup gets him up to the 15. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on his faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 106 yards rushing now as he's done it on 22 carries. And carries like that, that's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. The tackle that time by Zach Cunningham. Now is second and ten. Second and ten at the 34-yard line. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Throw caught there by Osborne. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down But a nice little gain. They need two. Here's third down. Third down. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And gets by him, and now a little daylight. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and one at the Eagles' 37-yard line. They'll try and run this one right up the gun. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That good for 19 and a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. Brings up second and three at the 11-yard line. He'll drop to throw. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Casey Hayward. And the Eagles will take over here at their own 12-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How things turn out for him? I think, okay, he's a guy. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, what has been a fantastic game for this defense has been rough for this offense. And certainly a signal caller, Charles, that's thrown all these interceptions. Another one there, and this one taken all the way back for the score. 
Carter hoping they're holding a nice little spot in the postgame highlights to show this rip of interceptions and great plays this group has made. They've been on it from snap one. Point after, right down the middle. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to that big lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And you can sort of sense their dejection. That last pick six put the icing on the cake, so to speak, in what has been a rough go for them. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that will bring up second down. A gain of two brings up second and eight at the 25-yard line. Shotgun now with Purdy. This short throw caught by Goddard. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. Here's third and three. A gain of six brings up third and three. Purdy now to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For Eagles first down. First and 10 at the 42 yard line. Purdy will look to throw again here. He finds his tight end, Goddard. That's complete. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Now second and five. Purdy looking to throw. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And after the nice stiff arm, the next wave swarms in quickly for the stop. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. Here's third and a few inches. Back to throw, Purdy. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down, and comfortably so as he gets five there on third and a yard. First down. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Purdy will set up to throw it here. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Another throw there off the mark, and obviously he's battled all of the interceptions. Things just haven't been true to form for him. I don't know. What do you think's going on out there, CD? That's a great question, and my suspicion is... And now here is another interception. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Vikings are going to get this back to their own 34-yard line. Another great play defensively. They've been sharp on both sides of the ball, Charles, but that interception means that this defense very well keep them down to single digits on the scoreboard in this game. And that's certainly something to smile about, isn't it, partner, if you're on defense? Because your goal every game is to pitch a shutout, but you and I both know that's pretty unrealistic. But to hold a team below double figures in a game, in an NFL game, that's certainly something to take pride in. They'll start on the ground here on first down, and he'll get this up to about the 40. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. It's a game of five. Brings up second and five at the 40-yard line. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Third down. Well, fans usually love to see scoring, and there was no shortage of it today. What a dominant showing from an offense that was truly playing at an elite level in this contest. Partner, this game was over a long time ago, and you noticed they did not want to slow down anything. Absolutely a dream scenario for everyone on that offense, and they took advantage of every second. Guaranteed popcorn for everyone in their film session. 
so for the Vikings, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week. Meanwhile, for Philadelphia, they'll fall to one and one. And they'll try to get back on the beam next week as they'll head to Tampa to take on the Bucks. So for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon God. Next game, guess what? Charles and I will be here again. It's the NFL on EA Sports.